So basically what's under the coat and like I explained before, when you've got winter conditions and everybody is in their parkas and, out and uh, downfill jackets, we all look round. But that's the same with the sheep. You look at her, you can't tell. Is she skinny? Is she fat? You have no idea. So that's why in the 1960s, they developed a fast, easy way of body conditioning scoring sheep because it was, you needed to have something that you didn't have to go and buy expensive equipment. Everyone can do it and it's quick and easy. So they developed the body condition scoring system. It's a one to five scale and often I'll say, oh, okay, this one feels more like a two and a half. That's when you're starting to get, uh, you know, you've used it long enough, you can tell, okay, she's a three. But, you know, uh, or two and a half, she's almost there, but she still needs a little bit more finish. Okay, so again, this is the scale, the one to five. Number one, where they're, uh, condition one, where they're emaciated, I call a bone rack. Number two, it's thin, often used coming off of pasture or weaning their lambs. Often they're at a two, but what you're aiming for is, your, is a three. This is our goal, is to have them no less than an, our three. Then a four, which is called fat. And for our type of sheep, we have a lot of East Frisian. We actually like to have quite a bit more condition on ours because ours feed triplets all summer long on pasture. So we have to have them in more condition so because they will milk it off their backs. Then there's a five, which is obese. So, using your hand, just like I said downstairs, there's your one, your two, your three, your four, and your five. Now, why do we body condition score our sheep? Well, one thing, it's quick and it's easy. We don't need to go and buy expensive equipment, and you can and it's much better than just having an overall look at your flock. And because if you can go and body condition score your ewe and say, okay, this one's a two and a half, it needs more groceries, it can be set off into this pen so that she gets the feed she needs. Also, it's quicker than weighing. You just, you know, as I was going down, I was going like that, I could tell if the ewe was fat or thin and, and that's a lot quicker than just weighing. And it's more accurate because of age difference, breed difference, gestation condition. Use, um, you know, the, the, the body condition and score affects how your you works. It will affect the number of lambs that are born because that uh, right before breeding, if your ewe is in a real poor body condition, she's not going to be shedding the number of eggs to be fertilized. Also, those eggs may get fertilized, but if she's in a bad body condition score, she is not going to retain those eggs. Does it? Okay, it affects the number of lambs that are fertilized, the eggs that are fertilized, and it affects the number of lambs that are born and born alive. It affects their mothering ability. If your ewe is in such bad shape that she can barely take care of herself, she's not going to be able to take care of her lambs. Also, colostrum pr production, that's that first milk those ewes produce, that critical, critical milk that they get those first 12 to 24 hours. If a ewe is in poor condition, she's not going to be too producing as much colostrum and she may actually be slower coming into milk. The lamb growth weights and weaning weights are actually affected by the condition of your ewe and the ewe's survival herself. Again, you can't tell by looking at them, and if you shear them, only a ewe that sheared for about six weeks, is the, uh, and then she starts putting more wool back on, so you can't really have an accurate um, estimate of her condition uh, and after six weeks after shearing. Okay, again, how do you do it? 
Okay, you use your hand and you find the backbone, you find the hip bones, you find the last rib, then you use your hand and you feel the spine with your fingers, you're locating the transverse processes, just like I showed you downstairs. Then with your hand, you're going to rock over top of that spine and feeling those processes. Now, you felt how wet they were down there, right? So this is Bill, and he's got their um, mechanics, disposable gloves. They're very sensitive tips on their fingers, so it keeps his hand dry and from freezing. But still, you can really have a sensitive t feel for those sheep. Be consistent. <laughs> Neighbors of ours, uh, they have a fight every time they go to do their body conditioning scoring with their sheep. So what they've decided to keep peace in the family, he only does the measuring the wife records. Because, Eve, because it is, uh, you know, it's subjective. And so what she would say it would be one measurement, and he said, no, it's another. It's better to just keep it consistent. You know your sheep, and you'll know next time, okay, no, she's gained, no, she's lost. So be consistent. Have them in the same area. If you take them now and shove them, say, in a scale, they're going to hunch up, and that's going to affect your condition score by a half point. Okay, there's your one. So extremely thin, emaciated. Now, you can feel every bone on the spine and transverse process. And, you know, if with extremely good feeding, you have a, a chance of bringing this you back up to a two or a three. But if you try and you feed her and there's no improvement, there could be a chance that uh, maybe she's old. This is where you need to have your rec keep your records. Is she 10 years old? Check her teeth. She has no teeth left. Chances are this poor old girl should be going down the road. Um, maybe she's got some other problems. So again, keep records. Uh, you know, and at our place, we body condition score a minimum of three times a year. So you can say, okay, we we checked her at weaning and she was a one and a half. It's three months later, she's still a one and a half. I'm sorry, girl, down the road you go. Two, uh, so below a two, again, that's what they look like after lambing. If you've got a super skinny you and you, and after she's lamb, you see bones. This is not good. So you should be separating her. Uh, beforehand, you're trying to do everything. You're testing for worms. You're checking for teeth. If no improvement, you color. If you've still got her and you're still trying, you put her in a thin group and you try to do everything for the you. Uh, but, you know, if you don't get those body condition score, the chance of losing the lamb and the ewes is much higher. Here's, this is sort of fuzzy. It's, this is from uh, Australia. Here it shows if a U is in the body condition score of a one and a half, if she had twins, the chance of those twins surviving is less than 50%. A U at over a four, her chance of those twins surviving is 80%. So it doubles. So if she only, a U at one and a half had only a single, you know, the chances are pretty good it will survive. But if she's having twins and if she had triplets, you know, you'd be down here. So it's really important. Okay, uh, two, that was this here. Okay, so she's thin. You can feel the bones, but they're, they're, are, they're a little bit rounded. There is some muscle on each side of the spine. And, but she needs to be increased, so either better pasture or given feed, a grain feed, to get her up into condition. And it takes time to do this. To one body condition score can take from 30 days to 90 days. Okay, below a uh, condition of a three, uh, lower levels of colostrum is produced, delay in meltdown. Uh, especially at lambing, you need those lambs getting that colostrum right away. 
and if that ewe's in poor condition and she doesn't start letting down her colostrum for the next day, that's too late. Those lambs need it within the first 12 hours to absorb the antibodies in that colostrum. So you need to get that ewe in a good shape so she's producing lots of colostrum and letting it down. Also, uh, a ewe that's in poor shape uh, has, oops, has lower lamb birth weights. They have uh, maternal instinct is, is, is affected. Uh, the bonding between the mother and lambs is lower. There's a much higher chances of different uh, things like pre pregnancy, toxemia, uh, hypoglycemia. All these things can happen if your U isn't in good shape. Okay, your aim for your flock is a three. You want at least 90% of your flock to be a three to maximize survival of the lambs, increased weaning weights, and if they're not, you mark them and sort them off. You look at this you, she looks round, she looks flat, you know, you know, she'd be a three. No, she was a two and a half. So she's been marked and she was put into our thinner group. You just can't tell by looking at them. Okay, so you want them to maintain them at a three or a three and a half. If they're fours, maybe you want to increase their exercise to make sure that they uh, stay in, you know, in good shape. You don't want them to get up to a five. You want to keep them at, a, at, at three to four. Okay, there's your three. This is what we're looking for. So you can see here there's there's covering over the spine, over the transverse processes. You try to get your fingers underneath that shelf and it doesn't happen. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is in front of you, you have, have spines. So we're gonna sort of do this, uh, if we could quietly do this, because there's a lot. This is your number one. You're gonna put your hand on it and you're gonna feel it and you're gonna feel down over the transverse process. And so we're, if we start with that one, you go and you feel that, and you pass it around and you keep zigzagging it all the way back. Okay, and once you're done, there's the two, three, four, five, and same here if you wanna start with the one, and work your way all the way back. So again, so this is, the hip bone is here, the last rib is here, you're taking your hand, you're feeling the spine, you're feeling with your fingers over the edge for the transverse process. You're feeling it and back and forth. Use your hand to go, okay, yeah, yeah, that does feel like it, okay? Okay, so this is the one we're aiming for. It's a three. There's good full muscle. There is some fat cover. And this is what we're aiming for for at flushing, for at breeding, at a three will still ref respond to flushing. That means increased nutrition prior to breeding. And so um, that's what we're looking for, is a three. A you that's a three, three plus, they start cycling earlier. So if you go to put your ram in, if you've got ewes that are a good three, they are more likely to come into heat and get bred within those first 17 days better than a U that is below a three. Higher conception rates because of the higher ovulation. This is the part I think is really interesting. A U at a three and a half at lambing will produce twice as much colostrum as a U at a two and a half. Like that's, that's important. And a ewe at a three and a half will, will wean off lambs 82% more weight than a ewe that was at a two and a half. Now that adds up. If you've got a fair number of sheep, you are increasing those heavy weight lambs. And with the heavier weight lambs, their survival is even greater. So you're weaning more lambs than with your thin ewes at a heavier weight. There's your four. So now it's getting a little bit harder to feel those bones, that there's thickness and fat over the vertebrae. Uh, you can only feel the spine with some direct pressure. 
Um, now you're starting to see some fat over the tail head. And a four does not need to be flushed before breeding. She's already in fat condition. And the main thing, you don't want her getting any heavier than that. So you may want to increase exercise to keep her in good condition. Here's your five. Now here you can't feel anything. It, this is your butter ball, turkey here. Uh, you can't feel the bones, there's just fat. Can't feel the spinal processes. Um, when she walks, she jiggles all over. Uh, the tail, the brisket. And sheep that are a five have, there's much more difficulty for those to conceive. Often there's a lot of fat around the ovaries, so they don't shed as many eggs. And if they do, even the, uh, the, the conception rate is low, and also for those eggs to stay embedded in the uterus is lower. So you may want to increase exercise. If she's on grain, uh, decrease it and because uh, you can start having problems. So if you get ewes that are over fat and they get pregnant, they've got big lambs in them, something's got to give and you'll end up, uh, more likely you'll get prolapses. Uh, again, um, they don't flush well. And conception rates don't improve if they're that high and you could have lambing problems. Um, it's interesting, I talk to a lot of people getting into raising sheep and they're scared to feed them grain. They said, they'll be too fat, I'll have lambing problems. Of the 30 years of, of Bill and I doing this and the phone calls we get, it's not because the ewes have been over fat. I think I've, we've only had one call in 30 years, the, la the ewe was too fat to get the lambs out. The majority of the problems have become the ewes were too skinny. They were too thin to even get through the labor. They got through the labor, had the lambs, and then died or didn't have enough milk. There's more problems with skinny ewes than fat ewes. Okay, when to body score. Uh, it's good to do in the before they're flushed, so prior to breeding, mid gestation, six weeks before lambing, um, and also at weaning. If you wean off and you're, you've got some ewes in real thin shape, it's going to take longer to get them up into condition for breeding. So you got to start it early. So this is sort of the normal, uh, what happens to a poor ewe when she, er, she is producing milk and feeding those she, the, her lambs during the year. It's quite common to have them starting at, if they started at two when they're, they're dried, they've just been weaned off. And so you're building them up, so you want them to be at your three here. And so you can see she's up at a three and a half where we want her at uh, late, ge uh, late gestation and into lactation. You want them up to your three and a half. So by the time she weans off those lambs again, she's back to a two. So if you think, if she was below that to begin with, you know, it's a, you know, it's really hard on their bodies. Okay, to increase them one body unit, it takes, it's equivalent to about 13% of the used body weight. That's at maintenance time. So if a ewe is a, uh, 68 kilos, um, she would need to gain approximately nine kilos of extra body condition to get her back up there. But it also depends on the quality of your feed and what you're feeding. It can take anywhere from 60 to 90 days to get her up there. And the thing is, if you wait till only six weeks before lambing, you're never going to get her there. You need to start early. Start early. Because otherwise, you're going to end up with you that's thin and trying to look after her babies. So start early. You got to start before weaning, uh, before breeding, and continue it during the year. So times to adjust intake after weaning. Flushing when you're flushing them before breeding, tapering them off again after breeding if they are in good shape and you're putting them on maintenance. If they're not at the level you want, 
after breeding and keep that nutrition up to keep them and get them back up to that three, three and a half and right through at uh, lambing. And if you can, try during um, lactation, have them on really good pasture. Uh, you may want to also supplement the lambs too. So here at late pregnancy, you can see the ewe here. She's just uh, about a week away from lambing. Lots of utter development has happened here. Uh, also, this is when 70% of the fetal growth happens in those last six weeks. So there's a real demand on that ewe. So she needs to be fed well for that mammary uh, development, for the colostrum development, uh, for, for the fetal growth, and maintaining her body. Okay, while they're lactating, uh, this is my favorite old ewe, Moosey, and her triplets out on grass. And so to keep that ewe in condition, they need to have good pasture. You can't just have this little scrubby stuff out there. They need good pasture to keep that production of milk for those lambs and so that you has some condition on her when she finally weans them. So you have to uh, watch and check body condition of those ewes, especially ones that are feeding twins and triplets, you know, that uh, try to maintain their condition. Okay, and what do you need to do? Why are, like, why are we here today? Well, we need to have more people know what body condition scoring is. Because so often you'll ask them and say, well, what is it? I've never even heard of it. So we need to educate people on what it is. We need to show them how to use it. And we need them to know when to use it. So, and once they use it, what do they do with that information? They need to know when to adjust their, ra their diets and their rations to keep that condition up. So why the main goals as a sheep producer? To produce more pounds of live lamb to get to market. So in other words, we'd like to make a profit. What we want to do is decrease the number of deaths of lambs and ewes and waste. And in other words, we don't want to lose profits. Um, I like this one. These are our sheep on, out in pasture. Bill loves rotational grazing. You may have heard of him talk grass. He loves lots of grass, and those ewes love the grass. So that's my talk on body condition scoring. So thanks a lot.